off. Well, so it's been done. He, because oh. he, he likes a Sprite better than he does a Mini. And I like Minis better than, than I do Sprites. And part of the reason why I went and helped Mike Kearney in 03 and 04 is because Joe shot his mouth off in 02 about how good his <laughs> rear-wheel drive mini was. <laughs> and I just figured that it was, uh, you know, if I could do anything to, uh, to uh, close his mouth, I was going to do it. <laughs> so I let Mike get back from the runoffs, and I called him up and said, hey, you know, uh, gosh, I got all these good parts and pieces here, and in some time I could help you. And so we went back and... Uh, Let's see, the car had had two national champions before that. We managed to win two national championships back to back, two years in a row with, well, let's see, when I bought my car, I had all sorts of special <coughs> gears and stuff like that that he didn't have, so we completely re-geared his gearbox. Worked out real good. Uh, he had it over-geared, and I, I uh, took a .04 drop gear, which is just a different primary gear you put onto the main shaft, which gears the whole thing down before it gets to the transmission, and that came out just right, basically, and so we had it all geared just right and whatever, and we went back there and hammered them. But uh, it was kind of a fun, so we ended up with, <laughs> he ended up with uh, four national championships with that car, and the last two GT5 national champions, before they actually switched the class to GTL. And I'll tell you what, I had, I come back, I was so tired, I couldn't even think hardly. Uh, we, we drove back there, it was like 52 hours of driving, <laughs> and we didn't stop. Road Atlanta or Mid-Ohio? Mid-Ohio. Mm -hmm. And then we spent, we spent two days of set up, Saturday and Sunday, and another five days at the track with five engine changes uh, for the whole week, basically, on that car. <coughs> But, uh, and I came back so tired, but I can't tell you when I ever had so much fun. <laughs> Never, I don't think in my whole in life, in my whole life I've had that much fun. You know, especially winning a national championship. <laughs> <laughs> and with a competitor like Joe. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I, mean I, I would feel sorry that Joe wasn't there because then I wouldn't have anybody to, you know I mean? I wouldn't have somebody to pick on. <laughs> no yardstick. Yeah, no, no yards. It's really nice to find somebody that's top competitor that you can actually try and compete against. And you were garaged next to each other. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they changed their motor. When they, it, Joe's motor doesn't come out and go back into his car real easy. It's a real wheel drive car or whatever. But we, we waited for a half hour after they started changing their motor and had ours already running uh, uh, at least an hour before they had theirs running so it was probably probably an hour to an hour and a half more to get this get his motor changed than what it was <coughs> to be for for mike's car or whatever what they did in 03 is they actually when they changed the motor because we used this nice sweet little motor i got back there on the, in the on the bench back here to blow him off the off the pole uh they have the only time that you practice with your class is on Tuesday. The rest of the time they're a combined class. So everybody goes for it. They're all set up and ready for tr qualification on Tuesday morning. And we knocked him off the pole uh, and, and won the pole on Tuesday mor morning. So it kind of puts him in a tizzy because man, if he can't out qualify, he'll, I mean, he, he goes to a, a large effort to out qualify him basically, big effort. So basically, he went to start, the, he uh, changed this motor and stuff like that, and his downfall was is he bumped the link, carburetor linkage while he's putting it in his car, and it broke about five laps into the race, so put him out. <coughs> that was 03. In 04, basically, he, he pulled a, one of his trick starts where he comes down to the start line too fast, and then he slows down, and as soon as he slows down, and then basically he hits it again, and they drop the flag. He blew his own differential, so we didn't really get, <laughs> we didn't get really a chance to beat him. Fair and square. Fair and square, basically. But I think we had him. So I mean, I'm sure we had him. So, <clears throat> but we ran away from the guy that was at, a, able to reel him in in 03 or 02 back there, basically, who wasn't there in 03. So, but basically, it was nice to actually put a 300 yard, put a 300 yard lead on the second place and just keep him there for 21 laps. 
that was an image. <laughs> that other front wheel drive man, you know what I mean? <laughs> As it should be. Yeah, it should, should be front wheel drive day. It's our rear wheel drive day. I don't have any more rear wheel drive news. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow, I, I think that I was going to uh, discuss also, instead of just oil systems or whatever, which is this, this is the latest I've come up with, and, and uh, there's no oil, no over oil pressureness on this because I got enough bypass line going back to the oil pump, or I mean back to the oil pan. Uh, a lot of race engines, when you light them up, you'll see 110 or 120, oil, 115 pounds of oil pressure, and it's because the pressure relief hole, which is in the block right here, is too small. And they won't re relieve oil pressure fast enough so until your oil actually gets warmed up. Where this <laughs> one here has a big line going back to it. And when I turn my motor on cold, it'll run 85 pounds of oil pressure. When I come off the track, it runs uh, 85 pounds of oil pressure. When you're out there running on the track doing 8,500, it's 85 pounds of oil pressure. <laughs> so, I mean, r a, real, a real solid oil pressure over there. So maybe we could just review in three or four easy steps what it takes. The first thing you do is remove the oil pressure seat. Yeah. Then and that's with a three-eighths coarse puller, basically. Oh, right here. Uh, and it's already got its threads in there, so it's three-eighths coarse. Three-eighths eighteen. Yeah. And then <coughs> drill your hole all the way through here into the oil pump. Take your plate, mount it. Hopefully, you have the proper one. That Actually, what what works out best is that you that you uh, go ahead and r drill this hole, and have your plate mounted in there, and then go ahead and drill the dang hole so that you uh, reach that you hole. get into this hole here. Uh -huh. That way, you get the other half of this hole drilled in the back back side of the adapter plate. Okay, because that's that's <laughs> the deal. Is you got to get it into the back side of the adapter plate. So then, clean all this out thoroughly after you've got it all drilled and that drilled. Install the new man manual transmission oil pressure seat. Really? Or oh, seat. seat. Yeah. All right. This end of the block is now done. Yeah. That's it. That's it. If you have an A pre just, A plus. Just don't think that just don't think that you're gonna bore it out to uh, some large bore because I think the key to that is is how much room you have between the bore and the oil pump here. Okay. When you have that down into that far. I don't believe that the ab adapter plate was probably meant for you to run pistons against. Could be though. Okay, so <coughs> this end of the block is done. Nothing needs to be done on a pre-A plus where the oil filter housing goes. It's all good to go. Yeah. There's no more holes to drill, no more modifications. No. On an That's A plus pretty, motor. Makes it, makes it pretty simple to actually adapt. It was just finding that oil pressure relief valve seat that's got holes in it to figure out that that's how they did it, or whatever, if you know what I mean. Gotcha. And, uh, that makes a uh, automatic block m far more useful than it used to be. You can actually make a real motor out of it. Okay. On an A plus automatic block, you do all the same stuff here, but you're limited to uh, putting the external oil pressure hose into the front of to the here. Pump. Yeah. So you're going to run a tube, or you've got to remote, run a remote oil filter housing. Well, yeah. Well, you get, you, you might, if you want, bolt the uh, oil. Well, I, I don't know. I guess you could bolt the uh, old oil filter onto the front of the block and then tap that out so you could run a pipe around the side. But other than that, yeah, I'd just, re I would just make a, a, a remote oil filter set up. Okay. That way, at least you could use the block. It's rather is better than throwing it into the scrap pile because I know there's probably quite a few of them that's gone there. Mm -hmm. Just for the fact that they didn't go on an automatic or on a stick case. I know that seems kind of simple or whatever. So I believe this has been bored out to uh, 1380. I believe it's that one there. That's been yeah. Clear. So it's more dangerous than yeah. when you're drilling that. Yeah. yeah. It just depends on yeah. how accurate the factory drilling is right. too, because they wander sometimes. Oh look at that. Get a pistons for you. Yeah. 
nice set of questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you are. Got a set of pistons for you, Eric. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice white spell forge 2618 <laughs> racing pistons. Put that along with this rod here, basically, and we can just put it together. As is. Oh, okay, let's do it. <laughs> 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 you just want one of those nice bullet cracks. We got another 50. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>